Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Almost the last section of Chapter 2. This is where things are going to get a little different. Brand new topic for everybody. We're moving away from the LCP and shifting left and right. We're going to throw in one new thing to end the, end the uh, chapter. Um, it's called equilibrium constant. And you're going to see these constants spread throughout all sciences, uh, especially through Chem 12. This is the first of like seven constants that we're going to see. Um, KEQ stands for equilibrium constant. Nothing fancy. The equilibrium is the EQ, and the K means constant. We have to write out the expression for these things. We have to figure out what does it actually mean and what does this constant actually look like. The constant has a very simple formula. It's just take all the concentrations of the products divided by all the concentrations of the reactants, and you will get some number from that, which we'll use to start comparing, comparing things later on in the course. For now, let's look at this um, equilibrium right here. And we're going to go over the few rules that are required to write out the KEQ expression. Rule number one, it's products over reactants. H2, I2 over HI. Rule number two, that coefficient is an exponent. So we got products over reactants, coefficients are exponents. Those are the two general rules for writing out the KEQ expression. So if we're going to do it for this e equilibrium right here, we're going to get N2 H2 cubed over NH3 squared. These coefficients are exponents. So we've got products over reactants, coefficients are exponents. One more rule. You can try this one. We'll, we'll check this tomorrow. One more rule. Solids and liquids can be ignored in the equilibrium expression because the concentration of a solid is constant. Okay? We never measured it in chapter 1. We're not measuring it in chapter 2. So if I have a big chunk of anything, the concentration in any spot will be constant. So if it's constant, it's not changing, it's not changing, it's not an equilibrium, we're not going to put it in our expression. So our third and final rule is products over reactants, coefficients are exponents, and you can ignore the liquids and solids. Why don't you try one right here? And then I will write the answer down and you can check what's going on. So press pause. Okay, so here's the answer. Products over reactants. Coefficients are exponents. Ignore liquids and solids. Solid gone, solid gone, liquid gone. What do we got? We got CO2 concentration over HF squared. Done. There's a multiple choice question. There's a part of a long answer. No brainer. Products over reactants. Coefficients are exponents. Ignore liquids and solids. So now that we can write out the expression, what does it mean? Well, this KEQ is going to have some value. Okay? The value can be very large or the value can be very small. Okay? It's always a ratio of products over reactants. So if you have a huge number, like 626, you're going to have a huge amount of products, which means you're very close to completion. We're using the similar words to section 2.3. If your number is very, very small, it means you have very little product. You have mostly reactants, which means you have not reacted at all. Okay? The larger the number, the more products you have. The smaller the number, the more reactants you have. And we'll start playing around with those numbers um, in the next couple of days. If you get a ratio of 1, that's the value of KEQ, you have a special case where you have the same amount of reactants and products. It's rare. You're probably never going to see it, but it does exist. Okay, example number four, so it says describe the extent of this reaction. Well, 10 to the negative 19 is a very small number. Very small numbers mean very little product. It means a lot of reactant. So you can say that, yeah, this reaction has not reacted that much at all. Okay, that's basically the end of the KEQ, believe it or not. But the next 1,900 pages of these notes are going to outline one simple thing. And I need, to do, I need you to tattoo this on your arm. Temperature is the only thing that can change KEQ. Temperature is the only thing that can change KEQ. Not concentration, not pressure, not volume. Only temperature. Because when you increase or decrease the temperature, equilibrium can't 
counteract that change. If we increase it by 10 degrees, we're always going to be keeping it in a hotter temperature, always. So equilibrium will never fully regain itself. So the temperature can change KEQ. And let's, you can read this, but we'll go over a, a little bit slower here. Okay? If you increase the temperature, and it's endothermic, which means the heat term is on the right, the reaction will, sh sorry, heat term is on the left, sorry. The equilibrium will shift to the right again and again and again and again and again, just like that example in class where I kept that test tube in the freezer, and the value of the KEQ will increase because it's shifting to the product side. And exothermic is the exact opposite. So if it shifts to the product side, KEQ is going to get larger. If it shifts to the reactant side, KEQ is going to get smaller. We will go over this again, but here is the exothermic example. Press pause, fill those in, see if it makes sense. Okay, so after these more questions, feel free to start doing those, um, but we'll, we'll have time in class to finish these up, and we will double-check everything there is to uh, know about equilibrium constants. Just remember, 